I'm here with Jean Houston, and she is a woman that certainly does not need a lot of introduction. Most everybody knows of her presence, her contribution to culture, um, the many, many books that she's authored over these many decades now. And she has been a mentor teacher to so many of us, me included. And two, her work extends to countries all around the planet and uh, with purposefulness and wonderful intent. And Jean, you know, uh, in particular with the dream tending extended community, people really are familiar with your work because your teachings certainly inform my own knowledge base and certainly inform the craft of dream tending. I'm just wondering, like we all are uh, in the world of today with the uncertainty that is up, um, what are your reflections? It would be just great to hear your insight and perhaps some of your counsel as well. Well, we could say that we're in ending times, certainly ending for a certain gestalt of belief and circumstances, but we're almost at opening times. That's why I say, be not afraid. You were made for these times. If you were wondering why you were suffering so much Sturm und Drang, storm and stress, unknowing. It was perhaps you were being prepared mm. for a time for which, as a collective, almost nobody's been prepared. And I find that there is a deepening, awakening awakement in so many people's minds today, because we are in the time that precedes the Renaissance. Mm. When you go back to the 14th century, in Europe, a uh, terrible pandemic, killed half of Europe and a good deal of the Middle East. And it was followed by the great 15th century uh, renewal, uh, regenesis. I love the Italian word for rinascita. Eh, rinascita. It's as if seeds, we were seeded and recoded for that time of quick dis quickening of discovery within ourselves, within the vast inner space that exceeds the outer space, with ways of putting things together, whether it was Leonardo, you know, inventing the future with um, what? Submarines, airplanes, helicopters, and it goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. a whole new sense of perspective. And I think that what is happening now is this growth of perspective. I mean, Magellan, uh, Columbus, Vasco da Gama, you know, traveling the seas, following, going all over the earth, uh, uh, Leonhard Hook with the infinitely small, the microscope, uh, Kepler, Copernicus, Galileo, the macroscope, well, the same things are going on right now. We're about to launch, I think it's tomorrow or tomorrow morning, yeah. the, the Webb telescope, which is a polyscope with many, many domains to explore the universe and even the Big Bang, <laughs> which they hope to get to. So that, that's where we are. What we now understand about how our bodies are coded with infinities so that healing, whether hands-on or at a distance or with scientific methods, healing becomes holing. It becomes the rejoining with a larger field of being. Mm. Uh, coherence, super coherence, ways in which we are being a possibility of radical repatterning that prepares us to be the, the change that makes the change. Yeah, that and at the same time, time, such awfulness. I had an interesting conversation this morning with uh, Carolyn Mace, in which we were talking about the butterfly metaphor and what happens, what happens in the time of um, breakdown mm. and peculiarities. And she said, well, maybe what is happening with these cults is that they are finding, trying to find cocoons to sustain them <laughs> before they find out what is their next stage or what they can be, which I thought was a wonderful, wonderful idea. And they build a whole yeah. seminar based on it. Um, so we, we are in the time of, 
the, the eve of regenesis. That's where I think we are. Yeah, and that is such a different idea than going into a kind of isolated depression. And yes. isolated part. depression is a very good example. Yeah, yeah, because so I think, well, so many mm -hmm. places where I'm traveling or interacting with folks, it's just, you know, so um, frightening, but to experience this as a place of not maybe depression, but I think what I've learned from you <laughs> a while back, that there's a place of ingression, you know, where we go inside and where we really, and then uh, the idea of being coded with infinities, that is a different approach and experience in my relationship or all of our relationships to experiencing the relevance of these times. Well, it is the move to uh, from a non-coherence to coherence to super coherence. Yeah. I mean, one of the exercises I do is having people get in touch with their optimal template, <laughs> which is the same of super coherence. Yeah, because uh, you know, I'm an old Platonist, and uh, Plato talked about that everything contains the divine idea of itself, the eidos, I love that word, the eidos. And, that, and then I turn the eidos into the entelechy, you know, mm -hmm. the higher wisdom of the self that is may even be a pattern, an optimal pattern that is yearning for us as much as we are yearning for it. And so I would create these exercises to touch in with this optimal pattern. And then all kinds of things happen when you, you take it seriously and you really rehearse with it. People get well, yeah. <laughs> even more than well. Well is okay. What really scares them is when they get weller. And weller. They find, yeah. <laughs> when they find themselves dwelling in a, a reality that exceeds their imagination and not just their desires. Well, now we need to develop capacity for imagination. As you know, I, I met Einstein when I was eight years old. Yes. And because uh, I went to a school that took us to meet the great elders of the time, including oh, just remarkable people like Helen Keller. And, you know, one of the uh, smart aleck boys, this is, I think it was the third, or I guess it was the fourth grade, said, Mr. Einstein, how can we get to be as smart as you? He said, ah read fairy tales. Mm. We did not like that answer at all. So another smart Alec boy said, well, Mr. Einstein, how can we get to be smarter than you? Ah, read more fairy tales. <laughs> well, what I rarely tell them the full story is that I did corner him afterwards. And I said, Mr. Einstein, you're talking about imagination. Now, that is not as uh, strange as it may seem, I ask him that question because my father was a comedy writer for Bob Hope, and he and the other writers would get together and imagine, and imagine, and imagine, and redream the higher dream, and come up with very kooky, spooky, weird, upside down, inside out reflections on the nature of reality, and then put it into a small play. Uh, so I was <laughs> right up there imagination. He said, then Einstein said, people think I'm so smart. No, math. No, you know, I'm a very bad mathematician. My students do all the main work, but I have an imagination and I live in it and I jump on a light beam and I go through the cosmos and I know things. See, he entered through imagination into what I'm referring to as super coherence with the very structure, the very physics and metaphysics of the universe itself. Well, and I find that all people have the same gifts. We don't use it. I think a lot of our problems is from, you know, in the Bible, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And I would say in my mother, father's house, there are many, many mansions, meaning different ways, modalities, talents, potencies. And we have forgotten to use them. I think it's because too much, uh, television too much uh, here i have a dog who wants to be part of this conversation <laughs> great too, too many things that do not speak to the dreaming of the higher dream redeem the time yeah. redeem the unread vision of the higher dream that's what my work is about and getting people excited about it <laughs> right well that certainly happened for me personally and then what you're sharing was very um, uh, touching for me just now, which is, you know, that higher dream 
dreaming us in need of us as we are in need yes. of it mm -hmm. i mean that is that changes a perspective that changes a life you know mm -hmm. to really experience the interaction and the eros between the two yeah yeah mm -hmm. Psyche in its divine incarnation requires Eros. Mm. And Eros requires Kairos. Yes. And Kairos is the loaded time. Yep. But in Kairos without Eros doesn't go very far. No. And and you know, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, in the dream tending community, there's, we spend so much time opening the mm. ways, the portals into imagination. Um, and then to experience being in the deep imagination, being part of that, you know, mind, that meta mind, that, that quality of inspiration, ingenuity, curiosity, you know, there's something different that happens. And then to combine that with the idea that you're offering, which is, whoa, there, yes, and it needs us as much as we need that reciprocity is quite, quite extraordinary, extraordinary and moving personally and, you know, part of a community. What did the poet once say? A man's reach must exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? And I rewrite that as a person's reach must exceed their grasp, for what's a meta for? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, Jean, I want to thank you um, for offering, uh, you know, what you have not only experienced, also what you have seen, not only with the literal eye, but more uh -huh. importantly, with that metaphoric capacity yeah. to see through multiple lenses, and then allow what comes back to you and your gift to all of us is the, you know, what, the download of the cosmos, if I could use metaphoric language, but to really experience what it might be to really live our lives in relationship to imagination, dream, vision, to be curious about life. Thank you. Thank you.